In this step-by-step -step installation video, we're showing you how to build a Weedy Fundo Primo custom shower design and get it ready for tile the same day. Weedy Fundo Primo, a precise prefabricated solution for custom tiled showers, fast and clean to install. Primo features a factory-made, pre-slope-based design ready to accept small or large format tiles when cut along the Fundo's slope lines. Primo is internally waterproof due to its closed cell extruded polystyrene foam core and is coated with a reinforced cement-based resin to allow for great and lasting tile bond. Primo is meant to be installed into Weedy's complete waterproofing and substrate preparation system. Join it with Weedy building panels for the walls, curbs, and many accessories offered by Weedy. Enjoy a complete system warranty for your shower from base to ceiling. Detailed installation manuals and more educational support is available online. For our professional contractors, Weedy offers local certification classes, the Weedy Online Academy, or a free certification through one of Weedy's field technicians right on site. Fundo Primo can be used to safely install custom or standard shower sizes. Here we're installing a four foot by six foot shower with off-center drain, a freestanding partition wall and step access to a Whirlpool tub area. This shower will provide a barrier-free entry and waterproofing will be extended into the entire bathroom. The Fundo Primo shower base is available in multiple sizes and always comes with the weedy drain system. A compression fit unit is also available as a cement glue connection unit if preferred. A brushed stainless steel cover and frame is also included and available in multiple color designs as well. We start by taking the Weedy Drain Assembly apart before we attach it to the Primo base. A bead of Weedy's house-engineered MS Polymer Joint Sealant is applied to a channel inside the base's plastic receiver ring, which is prefabricated and sealed inside the Weedy base by Weedy. Now insert the main part of the drain body firmly into the bead of sealant and the channel of the plastic receiver ring. Turn the base and insert the rubber O-ring first. followed by a fiber o-ring before tightening. Tighten the o-rings firmly against the metal ring built into the base by Weedy. The fiber o-ring ensures that the locking nut's pressure will be equally applied to the rubber for a smooth seal against the stainless steel. Take the locking nut and hand tighten. Please do not use wrenches or other tools to do this step. When tightening, make sure the drain body remains in its bead of Weedy joint sealant and receiver channel. Once the drain unit is connected to the Primo base, wipe flat all excess sealant at the drain opening area. It is important that the subfloor, whether concrete or wood, is even, clean, load-bearing, and free of deflection exceeding industry standards. Please note the 2x4 blocks added in between the studs. This will help back the connection between Weedy shower base and Weedy wall building panel, especially if some studs are not 100% aligned with your square framing. The 2 inch floor pipe must be cut flush to the subfloor surface or a maximum of 1 8 of an inch above for a proper connection to the Weedy drain. The floor pipe must be cut off square and even. Use a jigsaw to cut an opening with a diameter of 5 inches around the center of the floor pipe to allow for recessing the drain. For this custom project, we're dry fitting the 4 foot by 5 foot Primo base to determine the dimensions needed for the pre-sloped Weedy Fundo extension panel to complete our shower floor. Weedy's pre-sloped extension panels are prefabricated with a Z-notch connection to connect to applicable Weedy shower bases or further extension panels to continue a shower floor waterproofing, and a quarter inch per foot slope. As with all Weedy Primo shower bases, the extension panels can be cut to size. We are using a circular saw with a diamond or carbide blade to cleanly cut through the heavy duty traffic cement coating of the extension panel. Once the panel is cut to fit, the Z-notch channels must be remade as needed in the application. Because the panels are sloped in one direction, it's recommended to measure for all channel depth cuts from the bottom side of the panel. Here, we have to provide channels on three sides, which allow for installation of either weedy building panels on the walls or a finish component at the entrance area, such as a weedy curb, ramp, or in this case, a freestanding partition wall.
When cutting through the blue foam using a standard utility knife, please make sure to use a fresh blade for a clean cut. Remove all foam dust from channels once cut. Now we are dry fitting the pre-sloped extension panel for its tight fit and connection with our Primo base. Next, the base will be installed using a cement-based modified thinset mortar. It's recommended to protect the drain opening so no thinset can drop into it. When installing weedy bases to the floor, you may apply 1 3 8 inch to a half inch bed of thinset mortar to the floor using only a notch trowel. To achieve great and instant adhesion and a consistent setting bed providing high coverage, it'll be helpful to additionally skim coat the underside of the shower base using the flat side of the trowel. Alternatively, you can use a quarter by quarter square notch trowel and apply a full thin set mortar bed on the floor as well as on the underside of the base. In any case, it'll be helpful to spread thin set flat into all surfaces before combing through the mortar using the notch side of the trowel. All trowel lines should point in one direction and toward an open area to allow for air to escape from between mortar ridges once these collapses under pressure when the base is installed to the floor. Make sure all flat drain parts which come into contact with the floor or the base are covered with mortar to avoid any hollow spots or areas with lack of adhesion in this connection and setting bed. The Primo base is now laid into the mortar on the floor. Walk and weigh the Primo base into the thinset mortar bed so air can escape from the setting bed. Next, apply some weights evenly distributed over the surface and drain area. Tile boxes or mortar bags can be used. Leave these weights in place for at least 30 to 60 minutes, but do not remove them before weedy building panels are installed on at least two walls. They will keep the shower base locked into place. The pre-sloped extension panel is installed next using the same thin set mortar technique. The weedy joint sealant is continuously applied along connecting areas between Primo base and extension panel. Our joint sealant is a MS polymer material providing not only strong yet flexible adhesion but also a waterproof seal of seams to last for decades even in submerged installations. Make sure that no thin set contaminates the seal. Once the extension panel is in place, spread the excess sealant flat over the connection seam using a putty knife. Apply weights to the surface of the extension panel as well. Now we're installing the 4x8 by half inch weedy building panel. Dry fit the panel first and ensure a proper fit to the framed wall. Even though you can cut weedy building panels easy and very clean to fit in perfectly tight, it's recommended to square out the framing rather than trim and fit the weedy building panel to problematic areas. If not addressed directly with the framing, all wall areas are not square and plumb and they'll show in your tile assembly later. Where weedy building panels exceed the base area, notch the weedy building panel so it can rest fully into the base channel as well as on the subfloor outside the base area or, like in our case here, another structure such as this Whirlpool tub deck. Weedy building panels are cut with just a utility knife and a T-square. You may score and snap cleanly or cut all the way through the panel. When scoring and snapping, cut through the bottom layer of Weedy's strong reinforcing mesh to remove the part. Detail cuts can be done cleanly as shown here. This will help greatly when cutting out for plumbing parts later. All cutting can be done right where you install. There are no hazardous chemical or gaseous contaminants set free when cutting Weedy products and all dust can be removed with a broom. Before Weedy building panels are installed into the Primo base and extension panel channel, a half inch bed of Weedy joint sealant is continuously applied in the channel. Now install the first weedy building panel and push it all the way to the bottom of the base's channel. Ideally, you will see sealant oozing out from the inside seam between the base and panel. Use a level on the first board to make sure it's installed evenly fitting the channel. Spread all excess sealant flat using a putty knife. Weedy tab washers are now installed with weedy screws, either wood screws or steel stud screws. Starting in the corner of the framing and approximately one foot above the base surface, the bottom row of washers and screws is installed first while pushing the panel into the sealant and channel. This first row of washers and screws will lock the building panel into the sealant under compression. All other tab washers are now installed one per every 12 inches on each stud. In the upper area, fasteners are installed right into the transition seam to the next weedy building panel, creating a flush transition between the two panels. The tab washers are dimpled slightly below the flush with the panel surface. Don't worry about affecting the cement-based resin coating of the weedy building panel. 
It provides excellent bond and strength, but the waterproofing is provided by Weedy's closed cell XPS foam core. Next, we're installing a sidewall. To join the Weedy building panel here, a continuous half inch bead of Weedy joint sealant is applied up along the corner end of the panel and to the other side. Another half inch bead of Weedy joint sealant is continuously applied in the channel of the Primo base. Cutouts for plumbing should be made as tight as possible as such holes in your waterproofing present a risk of water running behind your tile and exiting through such cutouts. Please use Weedy sealant collars when starting to set tile to protect these cutouts properly. When the next Weedy building panel is installed, apply a half inch bead of Weedy joint sealant along the blue edge of a lower panel. This will create adhesion and waterproofing between the two panels. Install the next Weedy building panel and fasten it to the framing. Here we're installing the 1 8 inch thin Weedy building panel in an 8 by 8 thin set mortar bed to waterproof a part of the transition from shower to tub deck. Make sure to clean thin set off all surfaces we need to apply Weedy joint sealant to. A continuous half inch bead of Weedy joint sealant is applied along the edge of the vertical Weedy building panels before we apply the 8 inch thin Weedy building panel. Unlike on regular floors, Weedy does not recommend to place fasteners on any horizontal surfaces in wet areas such as here. Because structures such as seat or tub deck construction tend to offer a higher potential for movement and we're connecting a thin weedy panel with a thicker weedy building panel, the connection between both is especially reinforced by using weedy self-adhesive mesh tape embedded between the two applications of weedy joint sealant. Next we're going to install a seat and footrest which shall serve as a step into the whirlpool area as well. Only weedy 2 inch thick building panel is used to create this structure. Naturally waterproof and dimensionally stable, this method of eliminating traditional wooden sub-construction reduces risk of failure. Last but not least, because the weedy seat construction is built on top of the already waterproof shower construction, weedy 2 inch panels can be easily cut using a handsaw, a circular saw, or a jigsaw. Here we're cutting the vertical supports for the bench and we're adhering them to the weedy wall using either weedy joint sealant as shown here or thin set mortar. When adhering bench parts to the wall or with each other, make sure to apply pressure so the adhesive can form a good bond. A pitch for the top bench can be considered when cutting the supports or when installing the horizontal top of the bench by using weedy joint sealant as a wet shim. Please consider that you are installing the bench parts on top of a sloped surface and you may either cut to fit the bench parts or backfill the sloped areas with thin set mortar. Once the bench is installed, a final half inch bead of weedy joint sealant is applied along all the seams, connecting the bench to other surfaces and spread flat. This will keep water from entering between two waterproof surfaces and add reinforcement to the seams. Make sure to confirm that the bench shows a proper pitch towards the inside of the shower so water will not puddle in the seat area. Where the bench meets the slope floor base, thin set mortar is now backfilled into all gaps to provide proper support. Do not use weedy joint sealant here as it remains flexible. The first step up to the bench or footrest is now created again using the 2 inch weedy building panel. 
This step will show a curved front, so we need to measure the length of weedy panel needed for this quarter circle. Once the panel is cut to length, we use a circular saw to make relief cuts approximately three quarters of the panel thickness deep and spaced at one half inch. These cuts will allow us to bend the panel into a curved bench front. Dry fit the bench front with cuts facing away from you so that a smooth curved surface is maintained for the tile. The bench front and support parts are installed with weedy joint sealant. The curved bench front will be under tension as long as the joint sealant needs to initially cure and offer strong adhesion. Weights can be positioned to keep the part in its place as shown here. While the joint sealant at the bench front sets up, we're starting with the installation of a freestanding partition wall to the left of the shower entrance. Two walls are cut from weedy two-inch building panels using a jigsaw. One wall has a cutout window which will serve as a niche on the inside of the shower once both wall panels are glued together. The same inside panel has a Z-notch connection cut out at the bottom to fit into the shower base floor. The walls are glued together using modified thinset mortar and a 1 8 by 1 8 inch notch trowel. As you can see, the niche window is taped off so thinset won't run into this area. Weight is applied to the panels so the thinset mortar can initially cure under pressure. In the meantime, we can go back to finishing the curved seat and apply the top seat section. Once measured and cut, the top is applied with weedy joint sealant. Weedy joint sealant in the corner of the bench serves as a wet shim to provide the top with a bit of a pitch towards the shower floor so water can run off. Once the structure is in place, all seams are covered with weedy joint sealant and spread flat. The curved front panel is backfilled with thinset mortar to provide adequate support. Next we're installing a simple shelf for soap bars by fitting a triangular piece of weedy 2 inch panel into the shower corner. Weedy joint sealant is used to adhere the shelf to the wall. The connection seams are covered with joint sealant on bottom and top side of the shelf so proper reinforcement and a strong connection can support the shelf and weight applied on it. As you can see here, never dispose of any weedy 2 inch board leftover pieces. There are countless applications for these to be put to good use. Free hanging shelf units should not exceed 6 by 6 inches as measured on the wall sides without any further support. Now the thin set in between our weedy 2 inch partition walls has developed enough initial adhesion strength and we continue to install this wall. First dry fit the wall and make sure to mark where to apply the weedy joint sealant so that the walls fit tightly into the Z-notch channel at the shower base and will connect to the wall in a square and plumb fashion. Apply weedy joint sealant broadly all over surfaces where the wall will attach. The partition wall is an integral part of the shower waterproofing envelope, so all seams and connections must be sealed continuously. Now move the wall into the sealant and its final position by tightly fitting to the wall and shower base with a Z-notch channel. Ensure again that the partition wall is plumb and square before a 2x4 is used to apply some pressure on the wall and allow the joint sealant to set up. We now install a smaller return wall made of 2 inch weedy board and also cut to shape using a jigsaw. The adhesion to the larger portion of the floor can be done with weedy joint sealant, again once the wall is in perfect position. 
Partition walls made of two inch weedy building panels can be installed in a single layer or a double layer four inch thick wall and are extremely robust against any impact such as a person bumping into the tiled wall. These walls can be installed up to three feet in length without any further support or fastening to a ceiling. A return wall provides additional strength as seen here and will also serve to integrate a weedy ramp later. Once the return wall is in position, weight is used to apply compression to the weedy joint ceiling. Weedy joint sealant is a strong adhesive and not a joint filler. It needs pressure application to perform as a tightly installed adhesive between joining assembly parts. We are now cutting a Weedy ADA ramp to fit tightly into the shower base entrance area. Weedy's ramps feature an ADA compliant slope of 1 over 12 inches and come prefabricated with a Z-notch connection to fit into a Weedy Fundo Primo shower base. The Weedy ramp is 5 feet long and is cut to size using a utility knife and a speed square. Thin set mortar is used to provide a solid setting bed and adhesion for the ramp on the floor. Use the same trowel and mortar application technique as you did for the weedy shower base so the ramp is installed equally high and fitting into its designated base connections. To waterproof the connection to the base and the left and right wall, continuous beads of weedy joint sealant are applied before the ramp is fitted in tightly and weight is applied on the ramp. We are now creating a ramp return, a triangular piece, to finish its design on the open left side of the shower. The right length of ramp is cut off our remaining ramp piece and put in position with the help of a small triangular piece of weedy half inch board to help support and align the two ramp section slope. Dry fit the parts before applying them with weedy joint sealant and thinset. Our shower is now almost complete. This is a good time to apply the final half inch bead of weedy joint sealant over and along all seams in the assembly. The sealant is then spread flat and will cover your seams one and a half to two inches centered over the seam. This will not only provide you with peace of mind that even the slightest possible pinhole in the internal seam waterproofing is now covered. This topical application is also important for the reinforcement of the seams and will be stronger as any conventional mesh tape which functionality depends much on the strength and flexibility of the embedding thinset mortar application. Next we'll waterproof the drain connection. This is a step that can be done immediately once the shower base is installed or it can be done at a later point. You might even decide to set your 2 inch floor pipe assembly below the subfloor after the weedy installation if you have access to the floor from below. We're first applying the rubber sealing gasket between the floor pipe exterior and the weedy drain interior. The beveled edge of the gasket points up. Take your time to install this gasket without the use of any lubricants. This is a tight fit and the gasket will only work as a compression part if you install it flush with the 2 inch floor pipe's top edge. Now a locking nut is inserted into the weedy drain thread and moved downward to where it will meet the rubber sealing gasket. The small metal is now inserted into the prefabricated notches in the locking nut. A large flat headed screwdriver is inserted into the metal slot and you can start screwing in the locking nut. It will now compress the rubber sealing gasket downward until it makes a tight seal. The safe functionality of your drain connection can easily be tested using a drain plug and a cup of water prior to tiling or doing a full scale floor test. Now the drain cover frame is inserted. 
Note the open sides designed to allow water to drain from the thinset under the shower floor tile to reach the drain outlet. Optionally, the weedy drain box contains a black plastic height extender for the drain cover and frame. If needed when using thicker tile or stone on your shower floor, it can be cut to height and be placed into the drain opening area prior to putting the frame and cover on top. After only a few hours of installation, the entire shower is now waterproof and ready for tile once the weedy joint sealant has superficially cured after 15 to 20 minutes. A water flood test with plugged up drain can be performed only two hours after finishing the joint treatment with weedy joint sealant. You may use any tile or stone in any size, thickness or format over weedy shower systems. The installation can be done using any cement based thin set mortar. On the floor, tiles smaller than 2 by 2 inches require an epoxy grout joint. Larger tiles on the floor can be used if grout lines or relief cuts are made to go along with the four weedy slope lines. These are the diagonal lines at which the slope fields meet. 